Retinoblastoma Retinoblastoma is a rare type of eye cancer that primarily affects young children, typically before the age of 5, with only 200 to 300 new cases diagnosed each year. Retinoblastoma begins in the retina, the light-sensitive tissue at the back of the eye. It develops from immature cells called retinoblasts that normally form the retina during a baby's development in the womb. Mutations in a particular gene which regulates cell growth and division can cause these retinoblasts to grow abnormally and form cancerous tumors. If a child has this, you will notice a unique symptom of retinoblastoma called a white pupillary reflex, or cat's eye reflex. When light is shined into the pupil, it reflects off the tumor and the pupil appears white or pale instead of the normal red eye reflex. If caught early before the cancer has spread outside the eye, the survival rate is excellent, often over 95%. However, if the tumor has spread spread beyond the eye, the prognosis can be more serious with lower survival rates. Chemotherapy to shrink the tumor is usually used, as well as radiation therapy and surgical removal of the affected eye in some cases. Mesothelioma Assuming you were a minor working for a company that cared little for your health to the point of not giving you protective gear like masks and filters, would be among the 3,000 people in the United States each year affected by this as almost always the cause is excessive exposure to a material called asbestos, with these tiny fibers that can get lodged in the mesothelium and cause inflammation and genetic damage over time, leading to cancer. Mesothelioma is a type of cancer that affects the mesothelium, the protective lining that covers many internal organs. When you inhale or ingest asbestos, it can become trapped in your mesothelium, specifically in the lining of the lungs, abdomen, or rarely the heart. Over time, these fibers can cause inflammation and genetic changes in the mesothelial cells, leading to cancerous tumors. The symptoms can vary greatly depending on the location of the cancer. With lung mesothelioma, the most common type, you might experience shortness of breath, chest pain, and a persistent cough that won't go away, as the asbestos fibers will constantly rub against your lungs. Mesothelioma is a really aggressive cancer that's often diagnosed at an advanced stage when it's often too late. The overall five-year survival rate is around 10%, but it can vary depending on factors like the stage of the cancer at diagnosis and the individual's age and overall health. Treatment options include the usual surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy, but it often does little to nothing if in the third or fourth stage. Pheochromocytoma. With random bursts of anger or emotion, episodes of high blood pressure and anxiety attacks, pheochromocytoma might present as if you're having sudden mental breakdowns. Still, if you were unlucky enough, you'd instead have a rare tumor of your adrenal glands that affects only two to eight people for every million. Pheochromocytomas start from specialized cells in the inner part of the adrenal gland, which produce hormones that control your ability to stressful situations. The adrenal glands release the hormones in response to situations that you might find stressful. One of them is adrenaline. If you saw a bear, your body would almost instantly release this and you'd prepare to either fight or flee in a split second. So if you have an excess of these two, you'd have symptoms like episodic or persistent high blood pressure as your body constantly thinks it's preparing for a fight or flight, often accompanied by headaches, sweating, palpitations, and anxiety attacks. If left untreated, pheochromocytomas can lead to complications like heart failure, as non-adrenaline will cause the heart to pump to failure, stroke, and organ damage. Treatment typically involves surgical removal of the tumor, which can be curative if the tumor is localized and hasn't spread. Paget's disease of the breast. Paget's disease of the breast is a rare form of breast cancer that starts in the nipple and then may spread to the surrounding breast tissue. Paget's disease usually begins in the nipple area, specifically in an area called the nipple areola area. It typically arises from the same cells lining the breast's milk ducts. However, the disease has unique features that make it easy to spot. The most common symptom is a persistent eczema-like rash or scaling of the nipple and areola. This rash can be itchy and crusty and may ooze or bleed. Some women may also experience nipple burning or tingling sensation in the affected area. As the disease progresses, it can spread from the nipple into the breast tissue below, forming a lump or mass that can be felt during a breast exam. But the unfortunate 
unfortunate thing is that Paget's disease is more often than not associated with an underlying invasive breast cancer that usually has a pretty bad outcome. Treatment typically involves a combination of surgical removal of the nipple and surrounding breast tissue. Gastrointestinal stromal tumor. When the specialized cells found in the gastrointestinal tract wall responsible for controlling the contractions that move food through the digestive system begin to grow and multiply uncontrollably, forming a tumor mass, you have the formation of a gastrointestinal stromal tumor. In terms of numbers, GISTs account for only about 1-3% to of all gastrointestinal malignancies. It's estimated that around 5,000 to 6,000 new cases are diagnosed annually in the United States. They usually start because of mutations in specific genes that cause uncontrolled growth. These tumors can develop anywhere along the gastrointestinal tract, but they most commonly occur in the stomach, around 60% of cases, or the small intestines, around 30% of cases. Many people don't experience any symptoms, especially in the early stages. However, as the tumor grows more prominent, it can cause abdominal pain as it will continuously press on the nerves around the organs, causing bleeding because the tumor will begin to destroy the wall of the area and a feeling of fullness. Cholangiocarcinoma. As your liver produces bile juice, it needs a way to make sure the products get to your intestines, and that path would be something called the bile duct. Perhaps due to chronic inflammation, certain liver diseases, and exposure to certain chemicals or toxins, the cells in the pathway begin to have abnormal and uncontrolled growth of cells in the bile duct system. These cancerous cells can arise from the bile ducts within or outside the liver. This cancer only accounts for about 3% percent of all gastrointestinal cancers. It's estimated that only around 8,000 new cases are diagnosed annually in the United States. Because the cancers are growing in these ducts, they can block it entirely or obstruct and you start to have jaundice, yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes, as the bile builds up, abdominal pain because of nerve involvement, and weight loss as the cancer uses all the energy provided to the body to create more of itself. The outcome of cholangiocarcinoma, if diagnosed, is pretty bad, as it's an aggressive cancer that's often diagnosed at an advanced stage. The overall five-year survival rate is around 20%. The treatment options for cholangeal carcinoma may include surgery to remove the tumor, if possible, and in some cases, palliative care treatment to alleviate symptoms and improve quality of life, but not to cure it. Osteosarcoma, a pretty rare form of bone cancer, but with one extra symptom, excruciating pain in the end stages. Osteosarcoma is a type of bone cancer that mainly affects children and young adults. If you were to mix rapid bone growth during puberty, certain genetic factors, or radiation exposure, you'd have the perfect conditions for osteosarcoma to start anywhere in the body. Osteosarcoma is the cause of about 3% of all childhood cancers, around 800 to 900 new cases are diagnosed annually in the United States. One of the most common and alarming symptoms of osteosarcoma is persistent and severe bone pain. This pain usually gets worse during the night or with physical activity, reflecting the fact that, as with all tumors, they're as selfish as they come, continuing to expand and occupy more and more space without caring what will happen to the surrounding areas. As the cancerous cells multiply, they can cause a visible protrusion or mass which, if left untreated, will get larger and larger, eventually becoming massive to the point where it could be the size of a watermelon. Thymoma and thymic carcinoma. Your thymus is a unique organ located just behind your breastbone. It might not be huge, but it plays a massive role in your immune system during your childhood. Think of it as a training ground for special white blood cells called T cells. However, not all T cells are created equal. In your thymus, T cells undergo a boot camp. The thymus removes T cells that might attack your body by mistake and keeps the ones that can fight off invaders. This boot camp is so brutal that 90% of the original T cells are destroyed. Two tumors can usually arise from the thymus, thymoma and thymic carcinoma. Both originate from the epithelial cells lining the thymus, the layer of cells on the thymus. Thymic carcinoma, in contrast, is a much more aggressive tumor. The cells on top 
top of the thymus would now grow rapidly, forming a tumor with a higher chance of spreading to other organs. However, even slow-growing tumors can cause problems if they become large enough to press on nearby organs in the chest. This pressure can lead to symptoms like cough, a persistent cough that can be a sign of irritation in the airways caused by the tumor and shortness of breath. As the tumor grows, it can restrict space in the chest cavity, making breathing difficult. In some rare cases, thymic tumors can trigger an autoimmune disorder called myasthenia gravis. This occurs when antibodies mistakenly attack the neuromuscular junction, leading to muscle weakness, fatigue, or even respiratory failure as the muscles in your lungs weaken. Malignant Nerve Tumors this usually develops in people with a genetic condition called neurofibromatosis, which is a disorder that makes the body grow hundreds of small tumors along your nerves. However, you have to remember not all lumps or masses are cancerous. Malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors, as the name suggests, are rare and aggressive cancers affecting the cells surrounding the body's nerves. These cells are called Schwann cells. Their job is to protect and insulate the nerve like the insulator to an electrical cable. As the tumor grows, it can press the surrounding nerves, causing pain, numbness, tingling, or weakness in the affected area. If the tumor can affect a nerve that controls muscle movement, it can progress to muscular weakness or even paralysis. If the tumor affects nerves in the pelvic area, it can cause issues with bowel or bladder control, making you unable to hold your urine or bowels over time. These tumors can be very aggressive and spread quickly, so so late detection will almost always be an inferior outcome, and even if caught early, sometimes the tumor has completely swallowed the nerve, making it impossible for it to come out unscathed.